Coming up on Fresh Dew with Pastor Inkechi Ene. If your genuine desire is to have authority in the realms, then you need to walk maturity out, build it into momentum, and allow the logical manifestations of the almightiness of Father God to just happen wherever you go. Because you're not saying hallelujah to me. And I said, ha, ha, ha. And I said, ha, ha, ha. How many of us, by a shout of praise, can show how expectant we are for discovering treasures 2020? Changing the most transforming discovering treasures you have ever attended. Ha ha ha! Woo! I have been so excited. I could hardly have my breakfast, I could hardly have my lunch, and I'm not fasting. So, are you ready? It is my pleasure. It is my honor. It is my thrill. It is my bubwe. It is my joy to welcome you to Discovery Treasures Day One Maturity, Momentum, and Money. taking place globally and the church the true remnant church must position herself and be prepared for an oncoming last days assignment I call it and so our theme maturity momentum and manifestation I believe it's not just a theme for this calendar year or this church year what could possibly be a clarion call of the Holy Spirit for the church in this new decade, this third decade of the 21st century to position herself to really become the salt and the light and the city set on the hill that can never be hidden. 30 years ago, God took a man, not from this town, not from this city, not from this state, but molded him in another state and sent him here against all odds 
and against all expectations as a prophet for you all, for us all. The Lord quickened his spirit with a sense of urgency to lay a foundation for a transgenerational work. A good and a godly foundation, an inerrant foundation for a time like this. 30 years later, in a generation of biblical dimensions, God ushers us tonight into the real reason why he put that seed in his life. The real purpose why he touched that man and gave him a short lifespan and quickened his heart to do what was going to be foundational for what is about to become explosive in the name of Jesus. Today, Angela and I are glad and humbled, really humbled, Pastor Ketch, to be a part of this and to be a part of the generation that's witnessing what the Lord is doing. God moves and God deals generationally. And in the dynamics of the continuity of his divine purpose, we always see him walking with a Moses who sometimes out of the divine plan of God doesn't live very long but hands the baton properly over to a Joshua who is given a longer lifespan because of the settlement of what God wants to accomplish. Sometimes he uses an Elijah and quickens the heart of the Elijah and causes him to throw the mantle upon an Elisha who more often than not is shy felt that she wasn't qualified she wasn't ready how will Nigeria accept a woman because heaven's mysteries are about to be unfolded that would be the liberation of more others like what we are seeing to blow up the dimensions of what God wants to do. And so he births in her spirit. What is a yea and an amen to a lot of us around? Because we all try to tap what the spirit is saying in the now. And we hear shift. And we hear maturity. And we hear momentum. And we hear manifestations. And we are here to see what he wants to do. So he picks up this Elisha, picks up. This Joshua makes them go further, makes them do more. Walk last longer because of the solid foundation set. And each time you see that it gets better, deeper, expanding more into a purposeful dimension of God's glory. Yes, of course, the load gets heavier. But it's bearable because the foundation has been set. The grace is sufficient. And over time, God walks out the Gideon company and sets them together. And what the flesh told you 32,000 can do, heaven tells you it's only 300. So you don't waste your energy and time with 31,700 who are going nowhere. But gives, God gives you a company of agreement, a team of agreement, that when you look this way, they understand what you want. When you look this way, you, they understand what you need. Before you tell them, they receive it in their spirit because they are your prepared company of agreement. They operate more in the prepared places of God, more than in their own plans and their calculations and their pre-plans. And those are the people I'm watching this evening in the name of Jesus. Amen. Creation waits for you. TCC, creation waits, yearns, cries for the earnest, true, unadulterated, not gimmicks, not Africanisms, the true manifestations of the sons of God. As always in the fullness of time. You say, Pastor Soska, what are sons? Who are sons? They are male and they are female. Sons are the matured ones. They have been processed, developed through the rites of passages. They locate, sense, discern, find each other and understand the patterns, the cycles, the times, the seasons of God. And they gather their individual anointings and giftings and unctions into what I call a critical divine mass. And build a momentum so that manifestations will come. That the Nigeria we are expecting that we have not seen is beginning to merge. Because in the goodness of God, the sons in their momentum are building power. For manifestations that only can be said as the finger of God, the hand of God the arm of the Lord and the right hand of God that is exalted over every place. 
this team is discerned rightly. This conference is at the right time as you get ready for your 30th anniversary. This is the true pathway, church. This is the pathway of peace and prosperity of the people of God so that in the rejoicing of the city out of the manifestation of the almightiness of God, the people rejoice and the nations are exalted. We are finding our place and doing what God has called us. It may be a little bit out of the box, but it's the unction that God has placed upon us to cause a transformation in our day and in our time. This evening I say to you all, hallelujah. This is why, this is why, Pastor Kedge, this is why TCC, your processing has been different. It's taking time because it's for an, a mighty unleash of heaven's manifestations through you. This is why you exist. This is why you are very different. This is why you are an apostolic house, a lighthouse. You are like a spiritual hub. You are like a Dakar, a Lagos, a Monrovia, a London, a New York, where people cannot move from one level to another without passing through. And when they pass through, something changes in them. They change food. They change flight. They change crew. They change plane. Because there is a hub that gives them what they need to get for the next level. This is the hub we are sitting in now. If you believe it, shout amen. amen. You are a resource center for proper learning. An excellent grooming for releasing and for launching. And ladies and gentlemen and my fellow ministers here, love you all so much. I see my dear friend, I was preaching for him, Bishop and Pastor Mrs. Odunayo. Love every pastor here. And let me say to you that celebration is not only our commonality, but the diversity based on the uniqueness of God's operation in our life is what we must take on board. So TCC, catch it now. Take it now. It's fresh while it's happening this week because God is releasing what you must receive, and when you receive, retain it. And when you have worked it out, release it. Because until you do that, you break the cycle of the continuity of God's working upon your life. And you will stagnate. And when you stagnate, you will have no momentum in your life. But that is going to change. The Lord prophesied and spoke to us in Amos chapter 9, verse 13, that a time will come when the reaper will overtake the sower. By the time the sower thinks he's doing it, the reaping man has come. And the one that is treading the grapes, by the time he thinks he's making new wine, seeds are coming. This is the time. This is the hour. Hallelujah. May your maturity in momentum manifest. May your unique momentum reveal your maturity depth so that manifestations would occur and occur repeatedly. May the unique manifestations of the Holy Spirit in your midst and in your personal lives testify to your maturity which has gained momentum, divine speed, and direction. If you believe this, say amen. amen. Let's go to work tonight. Hebrews 11, 24. By faith, Moses when he became of age. By faith, Moses, when he was matured, he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin, esteeming the reproach of Christ Jesus, greater riches than the treasures of Egypt, for he looked to the reward. By faith, by faith, by faith, Moses forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. By faith, Moses kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, lest he who destroyed the firstborn should touch them. By faith, they all, they, they, passed through the Red Sea as going on dry land, whereas everybody else, the Egyptians, Attempted to do so and were drowned. Tonight I want to ask you a question. Are you ready for spiritual maturity? Are you really ready? So if you want a title, it's called spiritual maturity. Are you ready for it? Can you take the training 
whether you are here or you are watching through the different media platforms, can your heart take it? Are you ready for the journey? Because spiritual maturity is one short pathway to the Father's heart. It's one short pathway to divine treasures and indispensable for true and lasting manifestations. So what is maturity, you ask? Maturity is that which comes at the end of a period of obligation. When you have gone through the period of obligation, maturity sets. So quickly, write down or tell yourself, maturity is not gifting. And gifting is not maturity. Sometimes you need no process for a gift. I can call you right now, dip my hand in my pocket and give you something. You needed no maturity for it. All you needed was to walk up here and take it tremblingly and give me back at the end of the service. King James calls it perfection. Strange word, perfection. It means that everything that must be done has been done by your permission, by your complicity for this thing to happen. Maturity is a process. Can you all say process? It's a process or process. And it's usually rigorous. It's usually tasking. And it's usually uncomfortable. That's why I said, are you ready for it? It's a period when you come off age. You're off supervision. You're upgrading. You're off oversight. You are trusted to the last and trusted to last, you pass the test. So all the controls, the guardrails, the restrictions are removed with the confidence that you are now fully developed, matured enough, grown enough to discern, to judge, to weigh options, choices, and offers, and not just fall for any and all schemes and enticements. Maturity, church, is timing in a journey and the process, you must go the whole nine yards. The whole nine yards. Over these next three sessions, if your genuine desire is to have authority in the realms, then you need to walk maturity out. Build it into momentum and allow the logical manifestations of the almightiness of Father God to just happen wherever you go, just effortlessly, as it would appear to every person. Maturity is also full development. Can we all say that together? Full development with evidence. 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 If there is no evidence, we are going to doubt it. Evidence. 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 Maturity is full development with evidence. Can I hear you say it? Evidence. Those of you on this side by the choir in Lagos, can you all shout to me evidence? Yeah. Evidence. The people of Abuja, can you say evidence? Yeah. Evidence. All of you in this section in Banjul, Gambia, can you all shout yeah. evidence? Yeah. That is why in Pigeon we say, when John mature, who no know, go know. There is evidence. Somebody shout evidence. evidence. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a scientific fact that there is a little organ in your brain. It's called the medulla oblongata. And science has shown by fact that it's not fully matured until you are 25. So your son that says, Daddy, give me the key. After all, Chijioke is driving. Just hold your key. The medulla is still maturing. Because there are some risk that they will take. Not because they are bad. It's just this thing that has almost like a demonic name. Medulla oblongata. Please, I know Nigerians, you know, you have all kinds of names, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I know Nigerians call January, February, March, April, May. Some are called Lipia, Decade. That's fine. Medulla oblongata, stay away from the name. It's difficult. It's difficult. 
when you go to the U.S. consular and they ask you, yes, sir, what's your name? You say Medula Oblongata. I'm sure they're going to tell you that they have reasons for you not to visit the United States of America. Just take Chima, take Emeka, take Inkechi, or even take Kindred. They will allow you. Hallelujah. TCC, the time and the cycle of a generation has come. There's a shift into some, there's something beating in my spirit in this new decade that we have to manifest. Hallelujah. Every process, including the maturity process, has elements. Can you say elements? So the maturity process or the maturing process has elements in it. And these elements are deliberate. Deliberate pain. Deliberate pushing. Deliberate stretching. Deliberate pruning. Deliberate testing. Deliberate examining or examination. So like in the military training or boot camp, special forces, marines, SEAL team, there are levels of stress test that you must undergo because of the glory that is about to be manifested in your life. And so if we run into 2 Corinthians 4, 7, he tells us we have this treasure of the manifestation of God, but it's in earthen vessels. But permit me to qualify that these earthen vessels must be matured earthen vessels. Say those three words to me. One, two, three, go. Matured earthen vessels. When somebody is immature, you know what will happen. There are men who boast and said, I married a matured wife. Maturity is never overnight. If you show me an overnight matured person, I will advise you to run away. Because around them is a dangerous, toxic environment. When people are immature, when things are immature, and unprepared, not ready, not proven, not tested, they will crash. They will collapse under the slightest pressure and stress. 1919, December, the very first time I met my pastor, Dr. Mensah Otabil, after he had preached a Christmas service, he looked at me in his office. He said, do you have your own property? I said, no, sir. He said, are you renting? I said, yes, sir. He said, can I teach you something? I said, yes, sir. He said, when a tree is growing like a small plant, it doesn't make noise. If it makes noise, they will crush it. But if you take your time and grow and set things right and do some of the things in Titus 1, 4, 5, set things in order, and don't bother who is running ahead of you, but just stay in your lane. Understand that it's line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little, that the time of the fullness of God's blessing upon your life is going to show forth. You are not in any queue waiting for people ahead of you, and God is not running out of resources. He's omnipotent, he's omniscient, he's all-powerful, he's omniscient, he knows everything. What he has caught for you, when the fullness of the time has come, everything including even the things that fought you, strangely will conspire, excuse the word, conspire in your direction, in your favor. If you believe that, say amen. amen. So in every aspect of life, we develop, we grow, we are processed and molded from immaturity and inexperience to maturity. One of the things, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to bother you but must not bother you much is that in this journey of maturity, you're going to find that more often than not, you are cutting the sword for the first time. It is the pain of all of us who are founders, pioneers, senior pastors, presiding pastors. Sometimes you are doing something, you are making a decision, and everybody is shaking their head that, my God, it's not going to work. The reason they are doing that is that they have no precedent to fall upon, and neither do you have precedent. The only thing is that you looked up to God, and he parted the clouds, and in the fourth dimension of God's doing, you heard him unmistakably clear, and as, he, as if like how we call Saul, the Bible says they saw the light, but they did not hear the voice, because the voice is unique to you. He speaks to you, and ladies and gentlemen, come what may, you know that you know that you know that you heard God. And he shows up for you. So don't let the lack of precedence
bother you. It doesn't matter. In Numbers chapter 1 verse 3, actually first in Exodus 30, you're going to find that in some other verses, it talks about the age of which or at which an Israeli male became a soldier. And so you find the phrase, you find it in Numbers 1, 3. It starts actually in Exodus 30, verse 14. Every male 20 years and above. 20 years and above. 20 years and above. Some of you know about the Jewish bar mitzvah and all those kinds of things. Um, some of you have it. I'm sure the Igbos have it as some rites of passages that make people know that you are now a man. And so for Israel, God had it too. Because if you are going to war, it means you are ready to die. If you are going to war, it means that you are responsible enough to handle a gun, an RPG or something. You won't take it and be asking your sister, shall I shoot you? Will you die? That's immaturity. You have been trained. You are ready. 20 years and above. So in their thinking and understanding and their corporate consciousness as a nation, by 20, come what may, you are of age. You could marry. You could deal with money. You could get a job. You could take money, give money, pay taxes. Because you have been processed over time into a responsible man and a responsible woman. Process. Process. I know you've all done some signs as I have done. Ladies and gentlemen, if you go home today and open your shower or the sink, the wash and basin, and flip the lever to your left, except it's an Arabic one, you're going to find that after three, five, ten seconds, you cannot put your finger to touch the water. Why? Because it is hot. But it's not boiling. Water only boils when it has reached its maturity temperature. And that temperature is nothing but 100 degrees. And until the water begins to boil and bubble, it has enriched maturity. If you have one of those kettles that like to tell your neighbors what is happening in your kitchen, it will whistle. Whoa! Your neighbors will know you are boiling water. The maturity temperature of water is 100 degrees. It can be hot at 90. It is hot at 80. It is even hot at 75. But it's not boiling. Ladies and gentlemen, 176.667 degrees Celsius is the temperature at which cake begins to rise. Buy the flour, buy the milk, and I don't want to embarrass myself here, buy the other things <laughs> that are necessary to do it. Turn your oven on. Put the ifena inside there and speak in other tongues until you are tired. Nothing is going to happen. But in the process of the maturation of the dough, let me try now, and the flour and the milk and the vanilla essence and all the other things, there are inner workings which we don't see. There are inner workings which you don't see. So how dare you come out of the oven before it's 350 Fahrenheit? How dare you leave where God is making you mature at 120 degrees and step out to do your own thing? 